and welcome back. Thanks for coming into my third video. And for this one, we're going to jump right into a nice lever filler. Like I said last time, I don't happen to have a Parker, so I couldn't stick on brand to keep it with lever fillers. But this is a nice shaver. This is a balance. Um, it is overall pretty good condition. I've got my loop here to kind of help take a look at it and just kind of see if there's any cracks or things that we should be aware of but just on first glance I mean this thing's pretty good this is a nice like full size balance that fits well in the hand and it's got some gold trim with a band that's nicely secured does not rotate the clip the ball clip nice and tight this is a nice classic shaver kind of a shoulder clip right there um, the hump and it's got the full ball. Sometimes you'll see the later ones with kind of a, a compressed half ball or, or like little smushed down ball that's a little flatter. This one has the full ball, so probably a little bit older. Um, it's got the clip with its gold plating. Looks grossly intact, I would say. And let's see if we can try this with, uh, with the imprint again. We're always trying to make better visuals. Let's see. Maybe you can see it but at least it looks pretty crisp. I mean, I can read it without my loop, so W.A. Schaefer, um, Pen Company of Canada, Toronto, Ontario. And it's got some patent dates at the bottom, so very nice imprint for this age. And looks like we have, let's see, just a straight up gold nib the background. I gotta, I gotta mess around to see if I can focus. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. There we go. It's got a Schaefer 5-30, so I believe that actually means if you pay five dollars, this pen should last you 30 years. And it's got a nice, what probably is going to be a nice fine point. And of course, it's going to be a nail, like a lot of Schaefer's are. I don't get any flex when I'm really pushing on that nib. So let me zoom back out this way. And I'm just going to quickly take the loop, the things I'm going to look for on this pen. Um, I've come across a few that have had some cracks as this celluloid dries out. Um, I've gotten some cracks and some crumbling near the tips, the top or the bottom. Of course, I'm always going to look out for cracks and chips around the lip. Um, any kind of damage from tension maybe on the clip itself and just you know anywhere else along the barrel but you know high points are the tip the lip around the clip wow that's a rhyming and i'm going to go ahead and check out the threads to see if there's any crack or anything around the section itself so let's take a quick look i'm going to pop out from behind the camera just take a quick rotation around yeah the cap looks good The cap lip looks pretty intact as well. Mm. Looks like the base is good, and I'm gonna check out the threads momentarily. Yeah, everything looks nice. I'm just gonna throw a quick glance up to the nib, and no cracks near the breather hole, nothing near the shoulders, and it doesn't look like there's anything where the feed meets the section. So overall, other than just some oxidation and some surface wear to this particular pen, I think we're starting off in a good place. And I'll actually kind of start the breakdown now. I don't think I have to stop because I actually, earlier just messing with the pen, I was able to, don't make me a lie, there you go. This one actually came right off and I could be, you can shake the pen there and we're gonna get a bunch of goodies coming out of this guy. So a little bit of sack. I will of course take one of my little tools and dig around in the barrel and I'll show you one now. I'll show you the little LED light. So off on and I can stick it down in there and I know you probably aren't going to be able to see. Ooh, maybe you can see down into the barrel and you can kind of see, yeah, I don't see any more much sack. 
but you can kind of see the um, lever bar down in there, kind of like it's top here, bottom here. Let's see if I can, can we actually get it to, yeah. We can actually see a little depression of the lever bar. This looks like a J bar possibly. Looks like it curves around to the back. And I'm going to take a look behind the camera just to double check. Yeah, maybe some type of J-bar configuration because it does have that little um, part in the back that makes it stable, but this is a nice J-bar or a nice lever activation. Springs back into place, so that's even nice too. And take that away. And so this, we just have to do the knockout block. So let me grab that for you since I have at least the top part handy. Down. And I have the knockout block, my little hammer, and I have a few little rods. So let's pull out the rods. Let's find where we need to put this guy. So clearly too big, too big. That's got a little wiggle room. That fits nicely. I like this one. This is definitely secure. It's going to let the feed fall right through. And I have, let's see if the medium size fits. Oh, that's very nice. And let me see, I might have to adjust the camera here for just a second, just so you can kind of see the full action. And there we go. And take my medium. Look at the camera, and this is just as simple as I know they fell through. So there's our section, nice and empty. There's our feed, nice flat end of the feed, nothing special, no breather tubes. And of course, there's our nice nib, all in one piece. So I'm going to check at the bottom real quick. Yeah, nothing really cracked, and it's actually. Pretty clean, not been used to very much. So that's it. That's the disassembly, this one's nice and easy. And I will go ahead, just like last time, I will take my tape, my electrical tape, and I'm going to cover up the imprint. Um, I probably won't do anything to this, I can just keep this out of the way as I polish. Um, I'll go ahead and cover up my threads, be consistent like I did last time. And for this one, of course, I am going to protect the lip, so I will put a little tape that covers my lip and my gold band. And this I'll just be careful around, I'll just be coming up to it as I do my polishing. Um, and I think that's where I'll leave you now, and I'll come back after it's all taped up and I've done the polishing. And I might, since I skipped it last time, I'll just show you a little bit of the polishes. Um, I'll do the micro mesh off camera and then I'll come back and just kind of show you the simmachrome and to see if you can kind of see a stepwise change in any of the shine from my solid polish to the simmachrome to my Anderson pens kind of micro polish. I think that's where we'll meet back up. So until then, I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm back. I have done the polishing with my micro mesh pads and I just wanted to show again how I've kind of taped some of this off. I have the cap here where I have this cap band and ending just about where the the tape ends and so I protected that in the lip like I've said before and I just allowed myself to be careful more or less around the clip itself so I would take my pad and come right up to it and we have the section which I did and Here's the other bit. So I have my imprint covered up nicely and I have the thread, which I don't always do, but for being, I don't know, doing what I say and not just do what I say, not what I do kind of person here now, I'm gonna try to be a little more adhered to some of the just small safety things. And of course, whenever I use my pads, I'm coming in very small little circles and around the clip, uh, not clip, but the lever, I can just kind of lift it up and be careful around it. And what I wind up doing, and I, I have my 
pads away from me at the moment, but imagine this were the pad. I would, get a finger in there, kind of do small little circles for half of it just because I have this little obstacle in my way. So I would do small circles, small to medium, kind of going all around. And I would flip it over and I would do the same for the other side. And I don't know if this matters as much, but I'd also kind of do some blending circles um, at the end just to make sure that I've not spent too much time on one side or the other. I just kind of get it all even. And so this is where we've wound up. And I think what I'll do now, and just for the sake of again, showing it a bit of the method up front rather than just say what I did, I'm going to use a little bit of the Simichrome polish. And essentially I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm using the Simichrome. Let's turn it right side up for you. Simichrome. And you don't need much. In fact, I'll use this little guy and I will do that's probably a ton just in and of itself, but I want you to be able to see on camera. And really, I'm just initially just going to spread it all out. And this is really just doing the same kind of thing. And as you'll notice, I'm going straight over the, over the lever. And some people have different ideas about this. It depends, I think, also on which tier fountain pen you have. Like a good brand um, like Parker, Schaefer, Wall Eversharp, things like that where they're rolled gold or better gold filled um, rather than just gold plating. This tends to be okay, but on some really cheap ones, and I'm gonna name wherever, gold points, things like that where they're a little bit more just store brand stuff. Um, people I think are a little bit hesitant to use some of these even mildly abrasive polishes on them and I get it like there have been some where I've done it's like oop I took that plate right off and it's especially good to know when you come to the nibs and this is a gold nib like you're not going to be rubbing anything off but you do this for a nib that says gold plate that plate's going to come right off and you know if you have a one that's in mostly good condition where the plate's pretty much all there maybe just a little soap and water for it but if it's it's mostly gone it's like you know what i just wanted to look even just take it right off but that's something to be mindful as far as that goes and some people even then won't do the leaven they'll just do everything but the, but the liver or the the gold filled areas just to be extra safe and maybe even if you see some wear maybe you should stay back from it but i've never let that stop me too much and i think on the on the good brands, the good solid classic brands, I think their gold filling is good enough that you're not going to cause any trouble to it. So this is what I would do with the Simichrome and I've gotten it to the point where it's really just kind of disappearing. Yeah, and that just kind of shines it up, gives a little bit of protection and if I were to let's see, just kind of wipe some of it off, let's see if I can focus in a little bit more. Yeah, it does a pretty good job. And of course, I'm going to do all the pieces. I'm going to do each and every piece here. And then I'm going to follow it up with my micro polish that I have from Anderson Pens. So I'm not going to leave you on the camera just to watch me do that. So I'll take a pause here and we'll come back and we'll start getting it assembled. Okay, we're back again. And I went ahead and did all my polishing with, well, my polishes, even down to the nice micro polishes. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, the gold has shined up quite nicely, the band and the clip. So I think overall we've done a good job. Yeah. So now comes the time we have to put it back together. And let's go ahead and get the, oh yeah, just so you can see how nicely that polished up as well. See if it'll start to focus on that. Yeah. Very nice. So let's see if we can get everything back together. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to go ahead and put the feed into the section with the nib. So I'm going to come 
Let's see if I can get things out of the way so you can focus. I'm going to come as much up to the shoulders as I can. Gives you the nice tip beyond the edge of the feed. I'm sorry, this one's going to be very difficult for people who get headaches. But yeah, I'm going to go with that. It's right there. It gives me plenty of overlap. So I'm going to squeeze this like crazy. I'm going to grab my section. I'm going to put a little downward pressure for myself. There we go. That's good. That brings it just about to the tip there. So I guess it's this is their style preference right right here. There's enough overlap so that I could stop here because that little um, curve comes right nicely to the end of my feed. I mean to to the end of my section. So it's kind of nice aesthetic um, just to have it like that. But you could also say, well, I've got like another millimeter back here. Let's just see. If I can get it all the way back and really seat it in there and that's just about to the tip and I'm not going to worry about it too much that is more than in there and I think I think that's a pretty decent place to start so there's that part and now so you got gypped a little bit last time so we're going to go a little more slowly over the the sack part of it putting a sack in so let me grab this guy, which I kind of mentioned before, this is my sack sizer. And I'm just going to take the nipple end and just start going through, there we go. I got a good fit right around 19. Um, that's kind of a loose fit. So I know last time I said I always often downsize it. And I remember last time with it, it was in the 18 and that was a snug 18. There was no, there was no jiggling in that spot. So if I say this is a 19, I might actually stick with a 19 sack, knowing that it's probably going to be a little, I don't know, how do I say it? That I don't want, I, the 18 might be a little bit too tight. It might, it might want to squeeze itself off. So I might actually stay with a 19 and I don't, um, and I say might, but I am because I have a 19 sack right here. So again I should just be a little more careful in my wording so let's see this is a nice full-size balance so let's see how far down it'll go and I haven't will that go all the way a little bit wet let's see where is my talc let's do the talc part so I have a little bag of talc not the sexiest way to do it but this is the bag it came in and I can work with it so I put it in and just kind of get it coated. It doesn't have to be super thick or anything. It a little bit goes a long way. So there's a good talc sack. I'm going to let that help go as far down as it can. And that's about where I'm getting. It's probably kind of coming down to the taper part right here. So I'm going to use my thumbnail, grab it just where it comes up at the top of the barrel knowing that if I were to put that up to my section, where that's where, the, where this lip of my section would be. So then I'm gonna take a little bit extra off to come down and get rid of this middle part that's gonna be creating my friction fit because I just want the sack to go on the nipple up to there. So right there's where I'm going to cut. So I've now subtracted enough room to get rid of this part, this part that actually provides the friction fit. So that's essentially what I've done. And I'm going to squeeze it nice and tight, get it flat, take my scissors, and quick cut, and get that nice level cut. And that one was not perfect. A little bit off. This is where I could probably do a little bit different. Um, put it down on a flat surface with a razor and actually really that's it. But there we go. That gives me a nice flat edge. And where is it? Here it is. Come back with my shellac. Again, this one's from Anderson Pens, but you know, all shellacs are anywhere could be the same. And I am going to 
put a few beads around all along that nipple. Nice and juicy. Put that there for a second. It'll get a little tacky. And here's the part that I, I changed up last time. I couldn't find my little tweezers. See if I can zoom out anymore. That's going to be it. So these are what I, I've used. And I had another pair that had a crook in it. So a little more of a bend. But I lost it and I just haven't replaced it. So essentially what I'm going to do, and I might do this off camera a little bit, but I have the tip of my forceps here, tweezers, forceps, and you kind of open them up just like that. And the idea is you're going to, and yeah, I might have to do this off the camera. It's a little bit tricky. Um, yeah, I'll, sh I'll just show you by miming it, I guess. So you're going to open up the sack if I can hang on to it. A little bit like that and I'm right-handed so let me come back and what you're really going to do is slip it in just if I can do it see it with the camera just like that so I've slipped the nipple in and just pull those out and that leaves you with the sack on top and just like I said yeah this I think sticking with 19 was good oh maybe not do a little bit more. I tried to let it pause for a second so I could so the shellac would get tacky, but it takes a little bit more time. But let's just do it again for re repeat sake, since apparently I could do it over the camera. So I've opened up the space. It gives me something to kind of slip the nipple into, and then I can come down here and hold it. And there it is. It is in there. So I'm not going to touch it as much this time. I'm just going to let it sit for a minute. <laughs> but while I let it sit, I will retalc it just because I probably got some of it worn off from my initial fitting. So I'll just put a little bit more talc on it. Yeah. And give that a nice twirl. Get the shellac all evenly distributed in there. <laughs> and then I'm going to slip it back into the barrel. Yeah, and I like to do, the, to do the thing where here's my lever, here's the top of the nib. I like everything to align, just so it's, I don't know, it's aesthetic again. I like it to align. I think a lot of people do fall into that camp as well. There we go. Slip it in. It has a good fit. And I won't be messing with this for a minute, just so that shellac can, can dry in there. But I think overall, just eyeballing. Hmm. Man, I think it came out quite nicely. If I can just, again, hold on to things. And the last thing I will do while the shellac is in there drying, I'm going to go ahead and give it a polish. And that again, my Renaissance wax, just a touch. Again, just a touch. Well, that was a lot, actually. Get a little bit of film on there. And it's melting as I, just that friction is going to melt it and get it on there really nicely. And I can kind of see a sheen. I, I, I'm not even going to try with the camera, but I can see it go a little bit dull for a second. I'm even going to put it in there in the thread just because I can't avoid them. But I'm not going to do the feed itself. And I'm not going to nowhere near that so there's that and touch my fingers one more time in there and I'll get the cap as well and this lets me also also show you one little trick because you're going to use these creams these polishes this wax or whatever you might use and that's good and you're going to get it into some of the breather holes not not so much, but there is the breather hole here, and I know I got it on the other side. There we go. That one got mucked up. So just a little Q-tip, not Q-tip, toothpick cleans those right out. That's a good trick. Oh, and you can see I might need to brush the inside of this again. It's still got some ink in there, so I've got a little bit more work to do to clean out the inside. But that's the inside. I don't have to worry about polishing that. So 
I will just do another, another little soak with a little ammonia, a little soap and water, and use my pipe cleaner to clean out the inside. So I'm gonna, it's been drying for a minute. It melts fast, it dries fast. Then you just kind of polish it up with your soft cloth. And get it shining like the day it was made or close to it. There's a cap. I'll zoom back out. Ooh. Lift that up. Work around those threads around that just to make sure but and that is it we have a nice restored Schaefer balance god dang it all right I swear but here we go so I'll come back I'll, I'll get off this I'll look at some measurements I'll get those for you get my pad and ink and we'll see how this nice lifetime writes see you in a minute and welcome back. I've got my paper out. I've got an ink I've chosen. And to be able to match the ink with the pen, this time I have chosen a sepia ink, Leonardo Officina Italiana. I hope I said Officina correctly, and that's the way you say it. Let me know. Um, but this was originally a black and pearl. Um, this would have been the pearl, this nice kind of white pearly material. But over time, the pearl is well known to become this brown. It yellows to this yellowy, browny, tan color. So I think in order to pay homage to it, rather than just use a plain black ink, I chose sepia. So we'll see if we can match it with that. And doing my research, this is a Schaefer balance, and I think it's one of the earlier ones. Um, it is made in Toronto, Canada, so I'm not sure if any of the variations in these pens um, are different than what you would expect from some US dating systems. And the only thing I can see different about this one than what I was seeing on the Richard Bender website is I don't have a white dot. Maybe they didn't offer that kind of lifetime warranty or long-term warranty that they did in the US. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but if I go by the Bender site, trying to date it, I guess, more or less based on the clip design, which has changed steadily over the first few years of its invention. Um, I'm going to say that this one's probably one of the earlier models because it is fairly long. It kind of comes all the way down to the cap band itself. It has a round, large round uh, tip to the clip, and it has the humped clip and it's not yet streamlined at the top. So I'm gonna say all these things combined probably puts me around 1929, 1930. Um, and I'll go ahead and back up because I kind of forgot this, got to say this, because I recorded this once, but the sound was not on, so this is me doing take two, that just the unique history of the balance itself was this is the major transition from everything being the big, big blocky pens do I have one? Oh yeah, big blocky. Like the duo fold where everything is kind of cylindrical, squared off of the ends. Maybe you'd have a little roundness to it, but this was the style throughout most of the 20s. And then you get to Schaefer, trying to make themselves and set themselves apart. They start to taper it. And of course, they introduced the plastics. No longer is it black and hard rubber or whatever hard rubber you have. These are cellu celluloid plastics. Um, which allowed them to put a lot more colors and schemes into things. So it um, plastics and the tapered ends kind of give you a little bit less back end weight. So if you were to write with it, you're not having extra weight in the back. Or if you were to post it, you don't have as much material weighting you down in the back when you write. So that's the, that's the idea of the balance. And what else was I going to say about it? I think that's it. I, I, I do believe. So, I already filled it, because like I said, this is take two. So, 
Let's see, just for the sake of it, because it's always nice to hear the bubbles. Let's see if we can get them again. Actually, let's see. Oh yeah, that's me emptying. That's a lot of ink. This is good capacity. So there, there's the bubbles. Let's let it fill. And let's just see if I can. I wonder if I can show you and not make a mess. Just how much this can hold. Yeah, look at all that. That's pretty good ink capacity. Fill it back up. That's nice. I like that a lot. Okay. I wiped it off. Set, set that to the side. And we'll, we'll do the writing. So what we have here, sweet, is the Schaefer balance. We'll say right around 1930. I'll round that sucker off. And this is the black and pearl. We have it as a lever, oops, lever fill. And let's see, clearly this is a fine, extra fine to fine. And it does squeeze out a little bit of extra thickness, but I'm actually putting decent pressure on it to do this. So this is not one that I think you'd be writing in a hurry just to get that little bit of flex. So I think overall it's a fairly stiff nib and nice smooth line. I'll give it that, it is smooth. You feel the paper to nib feeling, but it's not scratchy. It's actually one of those pleasant, feelings to it and of course the finer you get you tend you do get a little bit more of the feedback um let's see it's a fine one it might be this might be a slightly drier ink too but yeah you get a little bit of laid down with it um but not it's certainly not a gusher it kind of feathers out nice and quickly but if i were to just squiggle like i were doing some fast writing it keeps up Yeah, that, that's a good pen. So let me see if I can turn for you and get you a better view of what we're talking about here. Yeah. So yeah, this would be a good daily writer. I mean, I tend to think of shapers as workhorses. They have those kind of nail hard nibs. There's not too many that are just like frankly flexible. And these guys were just good, solid performers all around. And I mean, they were made to last and clearly this one did. It's um, around 90 years old, if I, you know, give or take. And I think the last thing, because this is what I forgot to do, let's give you some sizes real quick. And I do believe I figured out what this was earlier. So if I line it up, cap on, this is about five and a quarter inches, something like that. Five and three eighths, five and a quarter. Right around there, that's capped. If I do the uncap, I'm going to have just over four and a half. So this would be four, five, eight, five eighths, I guess, something like that. Four and five eighths, and again, that's a little bit dependent on how much you put that feed and nib in there, but four and five eighths is pretty good. And yeah, very comfortable. It comes right to the crook of my thumb. So this is very comfortable to me. And I should have said that earlier. And then diameter, um, let's go find the thickest part. It's not quite half, half an inch, not there yet. So this is probably about 15, 30 seconds. And so if I go to my Bender website, which I've been uh, referring to, this puts me at the full length standard girth. So, um, very standard everyday pen. So full length standard girth, Schaefer balance. Oh, get you on the camera. So I hope you like this. I hope you now can start to look at balances and say, Hey, these are not so bad. And I think while I have you here, I'll go ahead and try to tease, because now we've done a button filler, we've done a lever fill, 
and I think the next one only makes sense. Let's do a vacuumatic. We can go back to Parker. I have, the, I have this particular um, senior set that I need to get fixed up, and definitely a nice big fat pen. And this would have been the next kind of innovation among filling systems uh, coming from Parker. And this one happens to have the lockdown filler, so it's going to be one of the earlier models. But that's that's I think that's a good place to start next. And this one will have a couple little challenges to it. But I think I hope this teases you for next time. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the balance. And next time we'll do the Parker Vacuumatic.